Did you know you can write MIDI parts, keyboard parts without a keyboard, specifically melodic parts without being able to play keys in Studio One. Gregor and I have both shown this before, but it's so cool. And every time I show it, someone says, ah, I had no idea that existed. So if you've never seen this before, this video is for you. If you've seen this before, it's a reminder that it's kind of cool, but I'm hoping that this video is an aha moment for at least one person. So here's the sitch. I'm sitting here and I need to create a clarinet part but I'm pretending like I don't know how to play a keyboard. I do, but let's assume I don't. Let's assume I don't even own a keyboard. What options do I have for writing a clarinet part um, for this song? In this instance, I wanna write the part and then print out the sheet music and have my son play it, but how can I do that? Well, one option, the terrible option, is to just double click in here and to start drawing notes in. I mean, you, we've probably all done that before. That's not fun to do. You can do it. It's painstaking, and it certainly doesn't feel very musical. But what other options do we have? Let me show you. What I'm going to do is record just an audio track of the part and then convert that to MIDI all within Studio One. So I'm going to whistle. I found whistling works well for making sure the note is exactly right versus singing. So I'm going to whistle a quick part and then show you how I convert it. Here we go. that last note but did I get it close enough all right so now I've got a whistle well the whistle's useless I'm, I, I, can we just agree that we should bring back more whistling not today we're gonna convert it but let's just bring back more whistling all right so now I've got this audio part hit command M control M on the PC to bring up Melodyne Essential to Melodyne it which is included with Studio One by the way so that does this, and what I'll typically do is go real aggressive with the pitch center and pitch drift because I want it to just know exactly what the pitch is. Let's double check, make sure that looks and sounds right. That first note's wrong. There we go. Man, my pitch was, my whistling was pitchy. <laughs> that last note was a struggle bus. Uh, real quick, let's solo this. That needs to be there. It's just one note. There we go. Okay, so you may be thinking, Joe, what, what is happening right now? All right, let me just let me just get out of here. Close Melodyne for a second. You'll notice this is an audio track. We've added Melodyne. What do you see when you look at it? You can see there's actually some what look like MIDI notes underneath. That's one of the ways Melodyne works. It has to know what each pitch is. If we look at Melodyne, it looks a little bit like a MIDI editor, right? These look kind of like MIDI notes. I mean, we can see the notes over here. We can see this is a C, this is an E flat, this is an F, this is a G. So that gives us a clue. So what we can do is create a clarinet track. So this is a, a virtual instrument using... Um, using um, presence. So we have a part there that we can play. What we can do is drag this audio file onto this instrument track and just let go and check out what happens. It extracts those MIDI notes and puts it there here on the track. So if I hit play and we just listen to this clarinet track. So it's, it's high, it's an octave up. So let's just go bring those notes down an octave. That should be easy enough to do. Here they are. Let's, uh, I'm holding down command and scrolling, which gives me this, by the way. Let's me change how tall the notes are. But this is here. I want to take that down an octave. So I'm going to select all these notes and just bring them down to that C down there. It should be good now. I think I might have messed up the timing. Let's zoom in a little bit. There we go. Uh, you know, at first what I'll do is I'll select these and I'll hit Q to quantize them, so they're snapped to the grid a little bit better. Then I should be able to just drag this. Very 
very cool. Now, it, it thinks these are like two notes here, so we can kind of clean that up a little bit and make that one longer. Uh, there was one other spot that was a little messed up. Yeah, it thought those were two because Melodyne chopped it into two notes. That's delightful. It's actually only supposed to be about three beats. Cool, so now we have our clarinet part. Now that's it, if you were just trying to create, um, it doesn't have to be clarinet, it could be like this cool synth line where you're like, <laughs> and it goes <laughs> like that, could be cool. You could do anything you want. It's taking your melody and converting it to MIDI so that you can drop it into any virtual um, instrument that you want. What's cool about this now is I can click over here and check it out. It gives me a chart of what I just created. Now I've got more on this particular track, but the part we just recorded is right here. And so we can literally create our own sheet music for the musician coming over. Maybe they said, I've thought about this example a lot. Let's say it's a cellist coming over and you've got this part you want them to play, but they don't play by ear. They got to have sheet music on a page. Well, in a pinch, you can just come in here and hum the part, convert it to MIDI, and then print that out and give that to them. And you don't have to tell them that you hummed it first. They'll just think you're this cool person who knows how to like score music like a champ. Pretty awesome. If you didn't know this existed, this isn't something I use every day, but when I do, it's so handy. And I'm always like, I should make a video about this. I'm, I probably have made a video about this, but here's another one because it's so cool. It deserves to, the thing about, by the way, the thing about YouTube, the thing about teaching this stuff, there's, we're going to repeat ourselves pretty regularly because A, you need to hear things more than once. B, I need to hear things more than once. And C, a video I made three years ago might not show up for someone new who needs to know how to do that thing. And so we continue to kind of remember and remind ourselves of these core features inside of Studio One, as well as talking about fun new features. But for me, best bang for the buck are some of these older features that make my life so much easier. One of the many, many reasons I still use Studio One to this day. All right, that's it. Thanks for watching. See you.